guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going over all the books I read in 2020. So this is the stats video. I have quite a few stats that I've never actually talked about before as like end of the year stats on my channel, mostly because this is the first year that I actually used a like reading tracker spreadsheet. I currently am using G's spreadsheet, Book Roast spreadsheet, which is the caw pile one. I liked it well enough, um, however I'm not fully sold on if I'm going to be using it again in 2021, only because you can't use half stars, it just does not work in the system. It's supposed to be able to allow you to actually like dive in deeper into different categories for why you're rating a book a certain way. However, I usually rate based on emotions. Um, and while I do feel like the Copile, like C-A-W-P-I-L-E system works really well, it's just not something that I always want to use. I would like to use half stars. So I don't have any half stars in these stats today to share with you because that's just not how it works and I wasn't going to go through and try and do more work <laughs> since we're already in January and I'm a little bit late getting some of these like end of the year videos going up. So we're gonna jump into stats first and then we will be going through every single book that I read in 2020 as well. Now first, according to Goodreads, I did actually read a total of 212 books. Um, I did actually read nine books twice in 2020, and that was mostly manga. I read some manga earlier in the year that I actually read again for the 25 Days of Manga, so I continue with the series. So um, minusing those nine books, I read a total of 203 books. Between those 203, 212 books, I read a total of 62,214 pages, which I want to say is pretty good for me. I think this is one of my best reading years lately. Um, not that I don't read very much, but uh, last year Presley was really little and I didn't have the best reading time last year, but this year I did pretty darn well. The average length of a book that I read was 293 pages. I think that's partly because I did read, you know, graphic novels, comics, and manga this year, which I always do, but I feel like that might have been a little bit more than normal um, because it is a lower amount than I was really expecting. I was expecting to be in like the low 300s just because most of the novels I read are at least 300 pages, but like I said, I did read a lot of manga and stuff like that, so it makes sense. And then according to Goodreads, my average rating was a 4.1, which again is really good. I had a really good reading year. Um, I do believe that if I took it from the 212 to the 203, I did do the math, and it would have made it a 4.09, so still about a 4.1. Now, one thing Copile does do is actually show you a bar graph of your books per month so you can sort of compare how you did each month. My best reading month as we can see here was obviously December. I read a total of 36 books in December um, and that's because I did the 25 days of manga. 25 of those books were manga, but I still read 11 books that month, which is not bad. It's still a really, really high number. And then my worst reading month for the year was in February. I think I read a total of five books and that is mostly because this was right before COVID shutdown stuff happened. We actually took a trip to San Diego um, with Leon's parents and we were out of town for like a week or something that month and then February is shorter overall as well. So I just did not get as much reading done. Now switching over to pages per month, the month that had the most number of pages read is going to be September. This is because I did Shadowhunter September in September obviously, and basically I read every single Shadowhunter book, which was 18 total books, and I read over 10,000 pages. I have never done that before, and it was a little bit crazy actually trying to do that. It's more than I would reasonably want to do every month if I'm not reading like manga, comics, or graphic novels to give a little bit of boost for pages. And then obviously the lowest number of pages that I read was in February because that was the lowest number of books. Um, compared to all the other months. It wasn't 
too far down. I still read over 2,000 pages and I think there was two other months this year that I only read around 2,000 pages as well, but February was the lowest. Moving into star ratings. Like I said, we won't have any half stars here, but that's just because the spreadsheet I used in 2020 didn't have those, but I had a total of 12 two stars, 43 three stars, 62 four stars, and 86 five stars. Almost half of what I read in 2020, I rated five stars, which is really good. I feel like I do know my reading tastes pretty well, so most of what I read were four or five stars, and I'm very happy with that. I don't think I realized I rated stuff so highly until I started compiling these stats but I'm very obviously happy with my reading. As for format, I read three audiobooks, 15 ebooks, 38 arcs, and 147 physical books, which is almost three quarters of what I read this year. That actually is pretty comparable to what I want to read. I want to get my physical TBR down in 2021 as well, so I'm hoping that most of my reading are also physical books. Um, the ebooks, I'm not too mad about. I wanted to try and at least do one or two a month, and 15 is about one or two a month. Um, I might try and up that a little bit this year. We shall see. But the one major change for me personally are the arcs. I actually never really read arcs before this year. Um, I had done a couple like street teams for indie authors, um, and then once I had Presley, I just completely dropped off of those lists because I had no time. Um, but I discovered NetGalley this year. Um, I had signed up previously for NetGalley, but I never realized how many arcs you could actually get on NetGalley. So I request quite a few. I don't always get approved, which is, you know, no big deal. But I read almost 40 arcs this year and a lot of them I really, really enjoyed and then subsequently bought the book as well. Moving into age categories, I read six middle grade, nine new adults, 79 adults, and 109 young adults. Now, one thing I have definitely noticed is I've been reading a lot more adult in 2020 and I feel like that is going to be something that happens more in the future as well. But one thing I just did want to mention, a lot of the manga that I ended up reading in 2020, I think they're all young adults. A lot of the manga I read are shonen or shoujo, so they are technically intended for the young adult audience. So that does boost those numbers up a little bit. Then for the genres I read, the biggest genre that I ended up reading was manga. Um, I think we all could tell, especially once I started the 25 days of manga, I definitely read a ton of manga this year. I read 52 manga, which is about a quarter of my total reading. I do understand that manga can actually have different subgenres. Like manga is the style more than a genre, but everybody seems to categorize that separately and it was something I wanted to keep track of. So even though I did read manga that are more contemporary and more fantasy, they have their own category. Then I also read 31 comics or graphic novels, 38 fantasy, 19 sci-fi, Sci-fi is my favorite genre and I do actually want to read more in the future. I do think sci-fi is not as prevalent in publishing sometimes as fantasy and I still love fantasy so it does not surprise me that I have such a high number of fantasy compared to sci-fi but I definitely want to focus on reading sci-fi more. 17 romance, 10 contemporary, 9 horror, 6 paranormal, 6 mystery, 5 magical realism or fabulism, 4 short story, 3 thriller, 1 dystopian, and 1 mythology. Now for the publication years, I mostly wanted to focus on if I read new releases, so the books that came out in 2020, and what I read for backlist. So I actually read 66 titles that came out in 2020, which is almost one third of what I ended up reading this year, which is actually pretty darn good. And so that does mean I read 137 titles that were published before 2020. The oldest book that I read by publication date was published in 1901, and that is The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And the newest book is actually an arc that I read of Dryad coming out January of 2021, and that is by Kurt Weeby. Our last book stat category are, did I read this before or was it a brand new book to me? Only 31 books of this year were rereads. That is only 15% of what I read. I do think I want to try to allow myself to reread a little bit more in the coming year just because 
I don't feel like I've been making that a priority, which is not a bad thing, but I do find myself wanting to reread older books to continue in series or just rereading books that I absolutely love. And in 2020, I didn't do that as much. The reason why this number is actually so high is because of the Shadowhunter September. I read 18 Shadowhunter books in September, and I think out of those 18, I had only not read five of them. So 13 of them I had read before, and that's almost half of that 31. So I do think that number will probably go up a little bit in 2021. Moving into authors. So like I mentioned before, I read 203 completely separate books. So not counting the rereads that I read. With those books, I ended up reading a total of 125 different authors. So obviously I read some series that had the same author. I did actually count if there was a book that was done by a duo. I did actually count each author separately. So 125 different people is what I read from. 40 of them are people of color. That is almost one third, which does mean that two thirds of what I read in 2020 were white. I am also white. I feel like that is something that we see a lot in publishing. There are a lot more white people that have been published than people of color. I do realize that a lot of it in young adult seems to be flipping a little bit more. We are getting more people in that space. That does not mean that we don't need more people of color authors because they definitely give us a new experience. And I personally love to read from people that are not exactly like me. So um, I definitely want them to keep that up, but I also know for sure that I want to make sure I'm broadening my horizons more, and I'm hoping to get this number in 2021, hopefully closer to like maybe half and half, since I was almost to the one third in the first place. As for gender, 80 of the authors that I read identify as female, 43 as male, and two as non-binary. Um, I could be completely wrong on only having two authors that identify as non-binary. Um, I tried to do my best to figure out what the authors identify as and like what pronouns they use and I could be completely off on some of them. If you ever see me in a video misgender an author or a character or anything like that, please, please let me know. I am doing my best to make sure I'm doing the research beforehand, um, especially with authors, so that I'm using the right pronouns. Now, what this does mean is I read about two-thirds female authors. That is very common for me. I do find that I pick up female authors' work more often than male authors, um, so this does not surprise me in the least. And then lastly, were these authors new to me? So have I read any book from them before this year. 92 of the authors were new, whereas 33 were ones I had read from before. So that is actually about a 75-25 split. Um, I do feel like reading a whole bunch of arcs and everything this year definitely helped with new authors, but I've also started new series and things this year. Like I said, I haven't reread as much, so I have definitely been reading a lot more from new authors than ones that I've, you know, read from and previously loved. Since I do expect to be rereading more, I do think this ratio might change a little bit, but I do want to at least be reading at least half, I want to say, of new authors. Okay, and now we are moving into every single book that I read in 2020. Strange Exit by Parker Peavy House. Reverie by Ryan LaSala. Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. Artifact One by J.T. Cruel. Deco Boko Sugar Days by Yusin Atsuko. Love Fortunes and Other Disasters. First Kisses and Other Misfortunes. And Love Charms and Other Catastrophes by Kimberly Carolias. Pretty Little Werewolf by Katie Salidas. A Darker Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light by V. E. Schwab. The Past and Other Things That Should Stay Buried by Sean David Hutchinson. Life is Strange Dust by Emma Vaselli. Dragon Age to Winter Nights by Patrick Weeks. Shards by Pip Reyes. Cancer Ships Aquarius by Anita Sunday. Love Me, Love Me Not, Volume 1 by Ayo Sakisaka. Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Arthur Blackfrost by Justin Vincent Gray. A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. Catalyst by Alan Dean Foster. Fence Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3 by C.S. Picot and Joanna the Mad. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. QQ Sweeper Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. Queen's Quality Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, and Volume 8 by Kiyosuke Motomi. 
Only When It's Us by Chloe Lease. Blue Flag Volume 1 by Kaito. Eat and Love Yourself by Sweeney Boo. Once and Future Volume 1, The King is Undead by Kieran Gillen. Ghosted in LA Volume 1 by Cena Grace. Hard in Hightown by Varric Tethros or Mary Kirby. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. Komi Can't Communicate Volume 1 by Tomohito Oda. Not Your Idol Volume 1 by Aoi Makino. Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. Mare in Turnum by Dershing Helmer. Love Me, Love Me Not Volume 2 by Ayo Sakisaka. The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. Prince Freya Volume 1 by Keiko Ishihara. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. Something is Killing the Children Volume 1 by James Tinian IV. Out of Body by Jeffrey Ford. The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino. For the Record by Charlotte Huang. The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Strange Love by Anne Aguire. The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. Love Sold Separately by Ellen Meister. Blue Flag Volume 2 by Kaito. Aurora Rising and Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. A Flower in a Field of Lions by Tyler Button and Ryan Cody. That Blue Sky Feeling Volume 3 by Okura. Want by Cindy Pon. Again Again by E. Lockhart. Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendara Blake. The Extraordinaries by T.J. Clune. Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power. Isola Chapter 1 by Brendan Fletcher. The Gospel of Loki by Joanne M. Harris. Honor Among Thieves by Rachel Kane and Anne Aguire. Geekerella by Ashley Poston. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Die Fantasy Heartbreaker by Kieran Gillen. The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. For Goodness Sake by Kaylin Smith. A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Love Me, Love Me Not, Volume 3 by Ayo Sakisaka. Die, Split the Party by Kieran Gillen. Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Prince Freya, Volume 2 by Keiko Ishihara. A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. The Vampire Rules by Michelle Maddow. Witchy by Ariel Slamet Rise. Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. The Friend Scheme by Kale Dietrich. Heroin Complex by Sarah Kuhn. Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Bittersweet by Serena Bowen. Paper Girls Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Cheung. Randomize by Andy Weir. Dream and Sun Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, Volume 8, Volume 9, and Volume 10 by Ichigo Takano. Architects of Memory by Karen Osborne. Shadow House You Can't Hide by Dan Poblocki. All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. A Prince on Paper by Alyssa Cole. Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard. Scritch Scratch by Lindsay Curry. Become You by Ichigo Takano. Hope Volume 1 Mother by Dirk Manning and Kaylin Smith. The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry. An Unnatural Life by Aaron K. Wagner. The Sword of Kai Gen by M. L. Wong. City of Bones. City of Ashes. City of Glass. City of Fallen Angels. City of Lost Souls. And City of Heavenly Fire. Clockwork Angel. Clockwork Prince. And Clockwork Princess. The Bane Chronicles. Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. Lady Midnight. Lord of Shadows. And Queen of Air and Darkness. Ghosts of the Shadow Market. And Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. The Red Scrolls of Magic, and The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. Mary by Brie Grant, Paper Girls Volume 3, and Volume 4 by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Cheung. The Unexplainable Disappearance of Mars Patel by Sheila Chari. We Were Restless Things by Cole Nagamatsu. The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Horrid by Katrina Leno. Paper Girls Volume 5, and Volume 6 by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Cheung. Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. Lock and Key, Welcome to Lovecraft, and Head Games by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. The Secret Girl, The Ruthless Boys, and The Forever Crew by C. M. Stunnich. Venus in the Blind Spot by Junji Ito. Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and McGuire. Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. 
Skyward Volume 2 by Joe Henderson, Secret Santa by Andrew Schaefer, Seven Devils by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe by Douglas Adams, Ferals by Jacob Gray, Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger, Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesare, Not Your Idol Volume 2 by Owie Mackinac, Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, Love Me Love Me Not Volume 4 by Ayo Sakisaka, His Holiday Crush by Kari Z, Number 6 Volume 1, and Volume 2 by Atsuko Asano, Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert, One Bed for Christmas by Jackie Lau, Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana Herrera, The Promised Neverland Volume 1, and Volume 2 by Kayu Shirai, Dryad Volume 1 by Curtis Wiebe, Blue Flag Volume 3, Volume 4, and Volume 5 by Kaito, Prince Freya Volume 3 by Keiko Ishihara, This Is Where the World Ends by Amy Jung, The Twelve The Father by Patrick Trahey, Behind the Scenes Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, Volume 5, Volume 6, and Volume 7 by Bisco Hattori, Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishor, You Have Arrived at Your Destination by Amor Tolls, and Zero Repeat Forever by G.S. Prendergast. So those were all 203 books that I read in 2020. Truthfully, I forgot that I had read some of the ones from really early on in the year because it feels like 2020 was at least two separate years before COVID and after that happened. So a lot of the books that I read in like January, February, March-ish, I forgot I actually read this year. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Let me know if there's any other stats that you would be interested in me tracking in this new year. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I do have videos up Mondays, Thursdays, and sometimes Saturdays, so I will see you then. Bye!